So, now that we've seen how to differentiate in vector form, we need to make sure we can also integrate in vector form. The extra consideration here is that when we integrate, we're going to generate a constant of integration. It won't surprise you to hear that that constant is going to be in vector form. And I would need to try and use an initial condition or some information the question has given us to deduce what the vector constant of integration would be. Okay, let's jump straight into an example. Here we've been told that a particle p is moving in a plane. At time t seconds, its velocity is given by this function. When t equals 0, the position vector of p is 2i minus 3j meters. We've been asked to find the position vector at time t seconds. OK, so we want to find the position vector in terms of t. OK, it's going to start with the information we've been given. I'm going to write this velocity function in column vector form. And I know that I should be able to find a position vector by integrating this velocity function. OK, so when we integrate, we get 3 over 2 t squared and we get 1 sixth t cubed. We must add on the constant of integration. So here I'm writing in vector form c d. These are individual terms that we're going to be able to find. OK, so here's the resultant. We've tied it up and written it all together. We've been told that when t equals 0, the position vector is 2, negative 3. So I can use that substitution to find c and d. OK, if we substitute t equals 0, OK, so looking at the top line, looking at the i components, I can see that 0 plus c should equal 2, which means c is 2. Similarly, looking at the j components, the bottom line, I can see that 0 plus d equals negative 3. d must be negative 3. Now that I know c and d, I can write a fully formed, generalized expression for the position vector in terms of t. OK, let's have a look at a second question with a bit more to do. So in this question, we've been told that a particle p is moving in a plane so that at time t, its acceleration is 4i minus 2tj meters per second squared. When t equals 3, the velocity of p is 6i meters per second and the position vector is 20i plus 3j meters. We first been asked to find the angle between the direction of motion of p and i when t equals 2. The direction of motion is always going to be the velocity. So, it's the angle between the velocity vector and i. So, let's start by generating that velocity function. I'm going to use column vector form. So, here's the acceleration. And we know that we can integrate that to find the velocity. The expression we get, 40 negative t squared. We know that there's going to be a constant of integration. So, here is the resultant written together, nice and tidy. We're told that when t equals 3, that velocity is going to be 6i. So we can do some substituting and use that information to find both c and d. So in the horizontal, if we're comparing i components, we know that 12 plus c equals 6, meaning c must be negative 6. And in the j component, in the vertical component, when we compare those, we see that negative 9 plus d equals 0, meaning d must be 9. So now we found c and d, we can write this velocity function. So now we found c and d, we can write the full velocity function. OK, we've been asked to find the angle between the velocity and i when t equals 2. So let's substitute t equals 2. And we get a velocity function 2, 5. OK, just a quick sketch of this. We're trying to find the angle in between this and i, which is the horizontal here. So we can use the tan function. Tan theta equals 5 over 2. Theta is going to equal 68.2 degrees. Part b asks us to find the distance of p from o when t equals 0. If we want to know the distance of p from o, when t equals 0, so that's at the beginning of the journey, we just want to know the original position vector. We want to know r when t equals 0. OK, let's find r. We can find that by integrating the velocity function. When we integrate, we're once again going to get a constant of integration. This time I'll call the components e and f. 
We know that when t equals 3, the position is 23. Okay, so let's just substitute t equals 3 into our resultant vector for position. And we'll set that equal to 23. So as usual, we'll use the horizontal to solve for E. That's going to be 20. And we'll use the vertical to solve for F. F equals negative 15. And we can see here that when t equals 0, at the beginning of the journey, our position vector is going to be 20, negative 15. Okay, since we want to know the distance from the origin to this particular point, we're just going to use Pythagoras on these two components, and we get a distance of 25 meters. The original position is 25 meters from the origin.